Kinks, Waterloo Sunset, which uh, is appropriate because as a lot of you know, I am in London with my family this week. I've just finished filming. It was a wrap for me last week. So we're taking a little time uh, to walk through the city. And I got to be honest with you, London is an amazing city. And, uh, but this COVID business COVID and life, like I forgot about it when I was in my bubble and I wasn't wearing a mask and I was kind of walking around life thinking that, that COVID was not a thing anymore. And holy cow, um, it is a thing. And London, it's, there's a lot of cashless restaurants you have to sign in. The government wants you to sign in to let you know where you are. Um, I don't know how many of you were alive in the 80s. <clears throat> I was just a kid. I was born in 77, so I was around six or seven years old when the AIDS pandemic broke out. And I remember there was a time where everyone thought you could catch AIDS from the toilet seat, and if someone spit on you or sneezed on you, and everyone is afraid of catching this disease that could kill you. And COVID is very much like that. So everything and everyone, um, when you're in the public space, can sort of make you feel um, kind of fearful. But despite that fear, uh, we've been enjoying our time in London for the most part. We got to see the Eye and the Tower of London, and we've um, walked you know, past Big Ben, which is all in scaffolding right now. We, um, we were staying up in Notting Hill area, so we got to see the Portobello Road and see that whole festival, the little flea market that they do on the weekend, which is very cool. Apparently the, the movie ruined that area for the for the inhabitants that were there about 20 years ago, but it's still a pretty cool neighborhood. Um, and we've walked everywhere, um, and we've taken some cabs everywhere, which has been amazing and a lot of fun. Um, there's also been something interesting being in London during the time of COVID, uh, trying to make a plan with five people. There's five of us in the Palaha Family Circus. And I'm gonna be honest with you, um, anxiety runs a little high and I think my wife and kids are watching and I owe them a public apology and so you know this is always a fun place for me to come and feel a lot of love but I think it's also pretty fair of me to come and say that you know I can be a real SOB sometimes and this week has been a true test of, of patience and planning and organizing and I'm not the greatest planner and organizer and so there's been a lot of anxiety um, and I think what's interesting about my anxiety, about my frustration, and about, you know, I think the whole family's feeling it, we all have our moments, um, is that all of it is exacerbated by the pandemic, 
which is um, sort of the topic of today's Palaha Chautauqua. Anxiety in the time of COVID. Uh, and I'd like to, to introduce a little character that I have created named the Grumper Jumper. So I want to tell you a story about the Grumper Jumper. Um, there is a Grumper Jumper and there's five of us. And at any given point, when I claim that this thing is around, it'll go for me. And then all of a sudden, I'll jump onto one of my kids and then jump on another kid and jumps on another kid and jumps on my wife. And at some given give me moment, someone's got the grumper. It's like, Rrr. Um, and my wife hates this. And she always binds it in the name of Jesus. And she's like, I do not accept the grumper jumper. Uh, and so there's a whole, we have a whole thing that happens um, with the grumper jumper. And she's right. Because I think that when you are uh, rolling with the Holy Spirit, there's only room for, and biblically so, there's only room for one spirit. So you either got the grumper jumper in you, you got the Holy Spirit in you. If you got the Holy Spirit in you, then there's no room for the grumper jumper. So I totally stand in agreement with her. And it is just a metaphor for this anxiety and for this feeling. Um, but man, it started me thinking about sort of the world at large and everyone that I'm running into and everyone that I'm meeting. So I want to talk to you guys tonight and I want to open up the door for some conversation to be happening tonight on the Palaha Chautauqua about anxiety, uh, about how you're dealing with anxiety, about any sort of, um, my wife is wonderful, um, uh, about any anxiety that, that, seems abnormal because of the circumstances. We went to church today when I was here filming Wonder Woman two years ago, which has not been released yet, which is coming now, I guess, December 25th, which I'm super excited for everybody to see. Um, Gal Gadot is amazing. Patty Jenkins, the director, is amazing. Um, when I was here filming, I was here for about two months, and I was staying at the Langham Hotel on Regent Street, which is like kind of north of the city a little bit. It's in the city, but on the northern end of it. And right across the street was a church called All Souls Church. John Nash um, designed it, and it's this really beautiful, interesting Regent Street. It runs right into it, and all of a sudden there's this round church with a very, very steep spiral or spire, steeple kind of thing. Um, Anyway, it was, it was a church that was cool, and it reminded me of home while I was away from home. And so I wanted to share that with my family today. And so we went, and um, we went to church there. And, uh, and it, it, <laughs> I was telling you guys a story, and I think the whole point of my story just slipped right out of my head. But, um, uh, man, so many thoughts just went through my head, and I completely lost track of where I was. Anyway... Um, man, that's what I love about the Palaha Chautauqua. Wonder Woman's coming out. We took my family to All Souls. All Souls Church. Grumper Jumper. Feeling anxiety. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Um, okay. So... You also have to understand that it's midnight here in uh, on London time, so I, I apologize for losing my train of thought. Um, yeah, but my I guess my point was that I was sitting there, we were just going around the city and talking to different people, and everybody is feeling anxious, and this anxiety that kind of, I don't know, man, it just supersedes the normal wear and tear, like we all get it. Oh, this was the point of my story. Thank you, I just remembered. Um, and while we were in church, so I, I did that whole thing just to get to this one point and then I just remembered it, which is good. While we were at the, yeah, I've got my notes, thank you. While we were at church, um, somebody, they literally were praying presidential election in the United States so that it was all of a sudden it made me aware that we are in this moment that not only has it been protests and the BLM um, and all of this sort of reshifting of our understanding of socioeconomic, the hierarchy, class structure, race structure in America. We've got a pandemic that we're dealing with. We've got an economy and a lockdown. There's rumors of a, and speculations of a second lockdown happening here in, in the UK. Um, and then you've got this election on November 4th that's got so many people torn up 
Um, I know Republicans who want to vote party line but aren't really for the president. I know people who aren't for the president but who don't know who are for people who Republicans who want to vote for Biden, Biden. All these like shifts, all these things that are happening and people who are like, I don't want to vote but I, this is normal to where I am. Um, I'm very much a centrist. And I'm, you know, there's a, I, I wish there was room for people who had a more uh, middle of the road point of view on stuff. But um, we have, we have got a lot on our plate and it's a global, the effects and the point of this, me getting political with you guys, is that, uh, that this election for the United States on November 4th has a global, there's global ramifications for it. So that people in a church in England, in London, England, and I gotta be honest with you, it was like social distancing. Everybody had a mask on. On the main floor, there was two by two by two by two, but all of them are you know, six feet apart. So it spaced out maybe 100, maybe there was 50, I don't know, between 50 and 100 people, give or take, were there today live, um, which is amazing that people are going back to church. But, it, but the fact that they're praying for this election in America just made me realize, and my kid even asked me, he's like, wow, are they really praying like, for our election? And it just shows you how tied we are and how close we are and how as a globe, like we are now a small community, like our global community because of social media, because of all of these things, like we have the ability to connect with one another and to talk with one another. Economically, we're tied. Socially, we're tied. All of it becoming very, 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 very small. Um, so I was telling you about the Grumper Jumper. The story is, there is no, it would make a good children's book one day. Um, it's in my imagination, there's this creepy little thing that just makes me grumpy and then it'll jump off and make somebody else grumpy and then it jumps off and makes somebody else grumpy. And I told you like in the beginning of the show, my wife always says, uh, yeah, uh, I buy that in the name of the, uh, in the name of Jesus. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't believe in the grumper jumper. And I'm like, I know. And of course I went back to that. I'm going to repeating myself here, but again, it goes back to as a Christian, you believe that you're filled with the Holy Spirit. There's no room for other spirits. So then as a Christian, my question is this, why, if I am a Christian and I believe that, uh, you know, I'm, and I'm trying to be holy and I'm trying to live my life according to, uh, you know, the way that my, the model person, Jesus, lived his life. Why then am I feeling anxious? Why then am I getting frustrated? Because that is not the, what I'm supposed to be doing. That's kind of falling short. Um, we were in a restaurant tonight, and the waiter, I'm telling on myself right now, just so you know. Um, and the guy who was kind of handling the food or whatever dropped his glove on the ground. Then he picked it up and he put it on. And then he went to like, he wiped his glove off with, you know, but then he went and like pushed stuff into the trash can and then grabbed my, the tray of my food. Anyway, I was like, and I had to say something and my kids were all like, what the heck? And it was one of those moments where I also found myself and then I needed some, I needed something from him like 10 minutes later and realized she's, that's why you, you can't, you just have to be nice to people. Um, but it was one of those moments where I was like, why am I feeling so anxious? And why am I so quick to be frustrated? And why am I uh, angry, you know? And so I, I, the rest of the church service today was actually really beautiful. And it talked about, there was a verse in Peter uh, that said what to pursue, you know? And you pursue holiness, you pursue a life that is that puts all the sinful behavior aside. And, and that you just kind of keep going and going and going. And it reminds me of a conversation I was having with uh, my co-star in Jurassic, this guy named Scott Hayes and his girlfriend Taylor. Um, and we had these really wonderful spiritual conversations. Now, I'm, as you guys, you know I'm a Christian, you know I'll talk about it. I'm not somebody who's constantly trying to like bring people into the fold, but what I do consider myself to be very much is a seed planner. So I will talk about my faith as I'm doing with you guys. I will live in a way that is hopefully attractive to people so that they'll be like, why, you know, what's your story? And I can tell my story um, because I am, I am just an actor and I am a broke down, you know, shack of a dude. Uh, and, and the only thing that's been redeeming about my life is, is the fact that I have, I get to tell this amazing story. Um, and people are always like, well, you're a star in Hollywood. And, and I always say, this is my little cheesy, but it's true. I'd rather be a moon reflecting the light of the sun than just be off to this tiny little distant dead star off in the distance. 
um, emitting some shaky light. So my question for you guys is this. Um, holiness. If we are holy, or if we are wanting to be holy, then why this major stumbling block of frustration right now? So if there is this pursuit to be good, and if there is this pursuit to be better than like what we're made, like what, like, and here's my, again, guys, as you get to know me, I think that humans, I love us, I love being a human being, and we have the ability to look into the mud and toy with our own fecal matter and make little shapes out of it and throw it at each other, or we have the ability to look up at the stars and to map out our entire future and build cities and civilizations. And there's this, so we are this, we are, we are this amazing creature. And as you break down the walls of it, we can have all sorts of wonderful conversations about God and about which God, and if you want to believe in this God or that God, and it's all good. And that's, and that's what this Chautauqua can be for. And you don't have to believe in Jesus to be listening to this. And you don't have to, um, no one's selling anything here. This is literally just a conversation about what it means to be alive. And we're all broken and we're all hurting and we're all scared right now. And we're all trying to figure out which way is north. And as Christians, as I, I believe, and here's where I'm, I'm getting to the point that, um, that, that there is a place that God is in control and that because he is in control, it's all going to work out. I mean, I've got some scriptures and stuff that I want to read, but I do want to walk you guys down this, um, uh, I want to walk you down this path real quick. Somebody just caught my attention. <laughs> Brian Manavoy, what's up, brother? It's so funny when people get your attention. So I was talking to Scott and Taylor the other night, and she was asking me about my faith. And I was talking about, you know, have you ever read the Bible? And she was like, no, I haven't. You know, I haven't. I said, well, you really should just like look into it. So this is the one that I read. It's the message. I read any of them. I get something new out of it every time I do. And she was like, what, 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 is the, what is it? And I said, at the end of the day, what the word is gonna give you is wisdom. And what wisdom is gonna breed in your life is discernment, the difference to know right from wrong. And what discernment is gonna give birth to in your life is authority. To have authority when you talk to people so that when stuff comes at you from the television or from the radio or from movies or from strangers or people in your own life, you have authority, you have discernment, you have wisdom, and that authority all of a sudden is going to give you patience for people. And that patience is going to give you peace. And that peace that you have, that peacefulness, there's a peace that surpasses all understanding. It means that you're going to not explode with anger. You're going to have this reserve and people are going to be like, whoa, what's going on with that? It's going to lead to kindness. You're going to treat people with more kindness and people are going to treat you with more kindness. And that kindness is going to breed gentleness. There's going to be a tenderness with which you move through the life. Gentleness is going to breed goodness. The things that you do, the things that you say, the things that you think are all going to start being really, really good and healthy and uplifting. And the words that come out of your mouth are going to be this like fresh spring water and you're going to speak blessings into people's lives and you're going to be encouraging and you're going to be uplifting. And that's going to give you self-control. The more goodness you have, the more responsibility and the more accountability you're going to feel for yourself and your own actions. And so that's where self-control comes in. You're going to stop doing things. You're going to stop saying things. You're going to stop thinking things that would lead you astray from being good. That self-control is going to lead to faith, a faith that is going to be deeper and more resounding and more. And it's going to be like this perpetual machine, like a motion that's a... Uh, Newton's law, an object in motion, my son just did, said this to me yesterday, an uh, object in motion tends to stay in motion, let's act it upon, you know, the other end of it is if it, uh, if it's not in motion, it stays stash, stationary. The point being that faith, that faith that will start to just bubble and lift is going to give you joy. You're just going to have this, like, unbelievable amount of joy and I gotta be really honest with you because I've tasted it in my own life. That joy is gonna make you not worry about financial worries. That joy is gonna make you not worry about a pandemic. That joy is not gonna, is gonna make you worry about losing your kid in the street. There's a joy where you're just gonna start trusting and have this faith that God is in control of your life and that you're okay. 
that it's all going to be okay. And I think that that joy leads to a love that is a perfect kind of love, which is we all feel love at times and we all know we love things, but I'm talking about like a love that, that I'm practicing, that I'm trying to practice, that I fail at all the time, but there's this perfect kind of love, uh, which is I think what, what we experience when we feel God loving us. It's how God loves us. It's how Jesus loved us. So that is how we would defeat the grumper jumper. That is how we would move through the world in effort to become holy. That is the goal here. Um, there are three verses I will read to you. The first one is Isaiah 40, 31. Let's see if I can find it. Um, they're pretty quick. Again, this is from the message. Um, but those who wait upon God, they get fresh strength. They spread their wings and soar like eagles. They run and don't get tired. They walk. They don't fall behind. Again, this is an effort in, in all of the, the trust, the faith, the love that we can feel would help us overcome this anxiety. The anxiety that is plaguing our planet right now that is crippling us. Strength, courage. The next one is Joshua 1.9. Strength, courage. Don't be timid. Don't get discouraged or anxious. God, your God, is with you every step you take. Every step you take. So what that says to me is that no matter where I am, no matter what I'm doing, no matter how just like, I want to punch somebody, whatever all that is, if I can just go, and just breathe and say, you know what, Lord, be here, be here, be here. Let me see the situation through your eyes. Let me be here. Um, I talk about death. <laughs> My kids make jokes about it. We just talked about it tonight. And I'm, it's almost like I want to prepare their little hearts for my eventual demise. Um, and I don't think that's going to be, and I hope that's not going to be, for a very long time. I'd like to see 100. I was born in 77. So, um, But this idea that, that God has got everything, so that even death is something to be afraid of, or to be anxious for, or to be, that there's a peace, like every step of the way, with everything, with this pandemic, with... Am I going to catch it? Do I have to wear a mask? Do I have to wash my hands? Yes, we have to take precautions. Yes, we have to be smart. We have to be wise. We have to do the right things. But at the same time, we also have to live with this peace and this joy, which brings me to this last verse. Um, which brings me to this last verse. is Matthew 6, 25-34. This is one of my favorites. Look at the hearts just blowing up. How many people, before I read this, how many people hit the little, um, hit the little star button, um, hit the little star button if you have been angry during this pandemic, like unusually angry at your spouse, hit your, hit the little star button if your spouse has been getting the brunt of the anger. There's some people that are angry. All right. Hit the little star button, uh, heart button. Sorry, the heart button. If uh, your kids, if your if your patience has been wearing thin with the kids, okay. There's some hearts. People are being frustrated with the kids, which is this. Now hit the little heart button. If uh, strangers have just been pissing you off, if you just walk, if you're trying to shop, and someone's not wearing a mask, or someone is making you wear a mask, you don't want to wear a mask, or whatever the story is, whatever side of the line you're on, because we are just absolutely divided or the news or random strangers hit that little heart button see there's a lot of like um yeah so it it leads me to this verse which is matthew um 6 26 if you decide for god living a life of god worship okay so that's what I'm talking about. Now, I can't speak to other philosophies. I've studied them. I went around the world in a boat during this thing called Semester at Sea. If you know me, I've talked about it. I talk about it a lot because it was a big, big highlight of my life. It's one of the high points, college. I went from Japan to China, down the coast of China to Vietnam, down into India, around India, and then up into uh, 
Point Saeed through the little canal there, the Suez Canal into Cyprus, Greece, Spain, Morocco, and then back into Florida. And um, my whole point was to study two things, world religion and, glo and world theater, like different, different uh, types of theater across the globe and different ways of practicing God. It's funny, I grew up a Christian. Um, I've told you guys this story before, the Good Friday thing. Uh, when I it was 17, I had a prayer of pride and I said to God, Lord, I don't know if I want to be a Christian or not. I'm going to take a little break, six months, I'm not going to pray. Six months turned into the six years of me kind of, want, like my, I call it my wandering through the desert, where I, um, where I just, I was a Christian, but I really wasn't. Like I, I mean, I was, and if you had, if I was lined up, if, if Nazis came and said all the Christians get in the line, I would line, I would have lined up. Um, but, but I wasn't acting like it. Um, and I remember thinking, well, if I'm going to, if I'm going to just swallow a faith, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm just going to do what my parents did. I was like, no, what I want to do is study Shintoism and Buddhism and, and Muslim faith and the Jewish faith and Hinduism. And I want to understand global, I want to understand the seven pole, you know, sevenfold path to enlightenment. I wanted to like, I wanted to just read about it and study a little bit and go see temples. And, and the more I did that, and God has a funny sense of humor, and I do believe that he is a personal God, and I do believe that uh, he wants a personal relationship with us. Um, <laughs> and, and I know this, I mean, I've, I've, C.S. Lewis has this amazing analogy for God. So it's, it's like when you reach into a, a dark hole in the ground and you do not expect to find life and all of a sudden you reach in there and you touch something, it's alive. That shock of like, oh my gosh, that's what God is to me. And I've met him, I've, I've talked to him, I've been, in, we, we'll have so many conversations on the Chautauqua we can have. I would love to hear your stories about when God has spoken to you or if, you know, he's used angels in your life or people in line like you never know and and that always stuck with me because it was like man he could Jesus could be anywhere um but uh yeah I did this this trip around the world and I studied all these religions and of course God with his amazing sense of humor put this kid named Ryan Johnson in my cabin he was my cabin mate it was he and I we had this porthole that was literally under the water so all you could do is see ocean water and then when the boat would stop moving, the water would come down a little bit and I could like see, it was kind of, I, was, I was in the steerage, low class. Um, <laughs> and, um, and he would say, man, brother, why are you, you know, he was a good old boy from Atlanta. He's like, brother, why are you, you know, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? Why don't you read the Bible? And I hadn't at that point. And I had all these vivid dreams about Jesus. And I had this dream that I was wrestling with this thing and I won and, and like the angel, you know, like, um, and uh, like the Bible story. And, um, and I just, it was almost like God and, and my specifically Jesus was just like, Hey, Christopher, boom, 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 I want you. Um, and then of course I met my wife, but before I did, I was praying to have my heart prepared for her. And then when that happened, uh, there was just this whole floodgate of, and, and, and it was weird. My relationship with my wife became very, almost like a metaphor for my relationship with God in the way that I learned how to love. It was almost like how God was trying to love me. It was very interesting. And it was, you know, this beautiful, we have this beautiful relationship and it was, the foundation of it was based in biblical love and the, and the love that, you know, Christ had for the church. And so that I was to have love like that for my bride. And I took it very seriously and, and still do. Um, so when I speak to you guys, all that to say, I know I'm rambling tonight, <laughs> but those of you who are keeping up with me, good on you. Um, all that to say, when I speak from a Christian point of view, know that that is my point of view. That's, I'm not, again, I'm not pushing this on you guys. I'm not selling it. I have been called a few times to talk to people specifically about it, at which point I will do. Um, tonight, apparently, I'm called to do that because I'm, I'm doing it. So when I read stuff, I'll read it. But tonight, we're doing the Bible because um, I feel like we need it as a globe. I feel like if you're watching this, you need it. I feel like if you're watching this, post this thing, you need it. 
Um, so when I read this stuff, know that, that I'm reading it for me. And that if you want, if it, if it, if it helps you, awesome. Um, if you decide for God, living a life of God worship, it follows that you don't fuss about what's at the tables at mealtimes or whether the clothes in your closet are in fashion. So I'm going to read it again. If you are trying to live a holy life, if you're trying to walk in Christ's footsteps, then you're not going to fuss about what's on your table at the mealtime, at dinner. You're not going to be anxious during a pandemic. You're not going to worry about the clothes in your closet. Because there's far more to your life than the food you put in your stomach, more to your outer appearance than the clothes you hang on your body. Look at the birds, free and unfettered, not tied down to their job description, careless in the care of God. Now, that's beautiful. Careless in the care of God. Careless in the care of God. I don't care what God you believe in. If you believe that there is something out there that loves you and cares for you, then there should be this letting go, this sort of resting in, this trust to be careless in the care of God. I love that. Because you count far more to him than the birds. Has anyone by fussing in front of the mirror ever gotten taller by so much as an inch? Hit the heart button if when you were a kid you looked in the mirror and just said uh, and fussed and fussed and tried to get taller. Or if you're a dude and you want more hair, you're like, come on. Uh, doesn't help, does it? All this time and money wasted on fashion. Do you think it makes that much difference? Instead of looking at the fashions. So this was this is a biblical reference to to our obsession with clothes and our appearance and our cool attitudes with what we do with our bodies and how we drink them up and how concerned we are and all the things that become then surrounded in consumerism, which is interesting, and a whole other conversation. But any mall you go to, um, all of it, we are a consumer nation and we are capitalists by and by. And our identity is, is interwoven with the clothes we wear and the cars we drive and the neighborhoods we live in and the schools we send our kids to and the way our hair and who cuts our hair and how much it costs. Um, and so this is not just about the clothes. It's about the entire fabric of identity, capitalism, money, status, wealth, all wrapped up. Instead of looking at the fashions, the status, walk out into the fields and look at the wild flowers. They never primp or shop, but have you ever seen color and design quite like it? The 10 best dressed men and women in the country look shabby alongside of them. If God gives such attention to the appearance of wildflowers, most of which are never even seen, <laughs> most of which are never even seen, do you think he'll attend to you? Well, don't you? Don't you think he'll take pride in you? That he'll do his best for you? What I'm trying to do here is to get you to relax. Which we can end here because that's kind of where it is. But I'll finish it. Not to be so preoccupied with getting so that you can respond to God's giving. People who don't know God and the way he works fuss over these things. But you know both God and how he works. Steep your life in God reality, God initiative, God provisions. Don't worry about missing out. And you'll find all your everyday human concerns will be met. Well, I think I was good. I think it was good to finish that. You'll find that all your everyday human concerns will be met. So, steep your life in God reality, God initiative, God provisions. Don't worry about missing out. Don't worry. It's funny, Jesus said, do not worry, 365 times. That's once for every time of the year. You've heard me say that before. Um, and so then that brings us back to the fruits of the Spirit. Joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, love. Say that again. Joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, 
gentleness, self-control, love. What if, what if instead of labeling ourselves, somebody earlier, I saw a post a minute ago that said, you know, don't say you're a Catholic, but be just be it, do it, show people by doing. Don't, what if instead of labeling ourselves things, these weird things that we label ourselves with, lawyer, doctor, actor, rich, poor, black, white, um, we can just keep going on. Uh, what if we just started expressing joy and peace with the words that came out of our mouth were blessings and not curses or libel or slander or grumpy, like just, you know, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, love. I love people. Um, it's funny, it, it really, it really, my kids and my wife are always like, gosh, dad, because I will talk to the taxi cab driver, I'll talk to our waiters, I'll talk to, I'll talk to you guys on Sunday nights when I get a chance. Like, I love people, I love hearing stories, I love, I love learning about the, I'm, we're here just for a minute, you know, it's such a fleeting experience, this life, and to have it in full measure, um, and, and, and love, it's funny, it's, you hear this thing about Africans where, uh, African uh, missionaries where it's a you know, mile wide, but it only an inch deep. And then I've also heard that it's exactly as deep as it's supposed to be. And that, you know, it, I don't know if you've heard that, then you know what I'm talking about. And if you haven't heard that, then, then the idea is that you could spread love real wide and thin and love everybody on a superficial level, or you can love a few people really, really deep. Oof, and I'm wondering, and my, uh, my, my Palaha Chautauqua um, uh, uh, assignment for you, if you will, if you will accept it, is practice this week and this year uh, moving into, uh, it's, it's Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur if you're Jewish, which is the new year. Uh, happy New Year! If you're Jew, if you're Jewish, hit your star. Let me your little heart. Let me. Are, are, do I have any friends out there who are Jewish watching? <laughs> um, there we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, happy New Year! And what I love is that school starts in September, and the Jewish New Year starts in September, and it feels very much like um, a great time as autumn hits. We talked about new beginnings last week and the autumn, fall equinox. I love this idea of, well, let's start fresh. Let's have a clean slate as we move into October and the election season and then into the holidays and into New Year and all of this stuff. Let's start right now. And really as a little community of, of, of Palaha Chautauqua viewers, but of, of human beings, of fellow travelers on this planet, let's try this week and, and I'm gonna, kind of break down where we're going with the next couple of Chautauquas. Um, let's break down and try to love wide and deep. Let's see how deep we can go with our wives, our husbands, our children, our parents, our siblings, our family, our friends, our intimate, that, that inner circle. Let's see how patient we can be. Let's see how kind we can be. Let's see how self-controlled we can be. Um, let's see how gentle we can be how peaceful we can be, how joyful, I said that, but how joyful and how loving we can be with those people. But then also let's test ourselves and see how wide we can love. So when we walk into a store and someone just pisses us off, we can say, you know what? I'm just gonna be cool. And how do I love that person? How do I see that person through God's eyes? Because we have no idea where they just came from or what they're going through. And how many people, hit your little heart button again, how many people have had that experience where you initially are so furious at somebody, but then you take just two seconds of your time to learn about where they are, and then all of a sudden you realize, holy cow, that person's a thousand times worse off than I am, and I totally have empathy for them now. I mean, it's a whole thing when you just take a minute to see the other side of the conversation. Because what I'm talking about here is, is revolutionary. I mean, people think Christianity is this, you know, this kind of BS, like, 
bigoted ownership of blah, blah, blah. And I will argue, I will be an apologist through and through that, that Jesus Christ was the most revolutionary dude ever to walk this planet. That when he came 2,000 years ago to this planet, he changed it forever for good. The revolution is alive and well in the hearts of people who follow him. And the revolution is love. The revolution is how do we break through all the noise and the clatter and I'm a dude in Hollywood. I'm trying to make movies, and the movies I'm trying to make are, are, are things that inspire, are things that give hope. And I, Hollywood's my mission field. And I, like I said, I was just making Jurassic World, and we were talking about Jesus on set. Like, it's an amazing thing. And I'm not saying that, that but what I'm talking about is, is, is Jesus and his message of love, which is get out there, and all of the anger and the division and the bitterness. Our actions, come November, are going to have a global ramification. People in England are praying about our election, if you're American watching this, who we're going to vote for. And I can't tell you who to vote for. I don't know. That's not up to me. It doesn't even matter. But you have to break. I mean, it does matter. It matters significantly. But it's your choice. And my point is, prayerfully move into that choice. Prayerfully, when you're going to the grocery store, if you're protesting, or if you're out and there's a pandemic and and people are afraid that you're, they're going to die, then we have a responsibility to walk around and, and to do the right things. And if that means wearing a mask, even though if it seems ridiculous, then we wear a mask. We don't do it at home, but we do it in, you know. Um, wash your hands. Be nice. Love. So, what do we got? We got it all. We kind of did it. And we got 15 minutes. Um... Let's talk. I'm going to open up the party lines. And uh, who, I love it. I love that. The Vatican, the, you're deep and wide all week long. Deep and wide. Does anybody want to, let me see something. Um, if I can find a poem real quick. Let me see something. This is a little spontaneous. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to read you guys a poem. Yeah, see? Australian news shows, too. Everyone's praying. Yeah. Yeah. I hope that this was good for you guys. Laura, you just said thank you, Chris, and even this today. I just want to encourage you guys, and if I have anything to say, I mean, listen, my movies, I've made some, I thought, some really fantastic TV shows that got canceled after one season, and other than paying my bills for a couple years, like, or a year, two years, whatever, it's all water. It all just kind of gets washed away. But the friendships I've made on set, the seeds I planted in thought and idea, like that stuff is lasting. Um, I feel like there are some movies, some stories that we can tell that would be, you know, like I look at Chariots of Fire or I look at Robert Duvall's The Apostle. There's some movies where I'm like, I can go back to it and it refreshes my soul. There's music that refreshes me. Poem to you. And then, and then in the last little bit, we can open it up. So, um, Pedro Pietri, P-I-E-T-R-E, okay? He was a, a New Yorkian poet in the 70s in New York City. He grew up a Puerto Rican, New York guy. And it's called Ode to a Grasshopper. I hope the only reason that I am this pre-autumn afternoon in the privacy of my suspicious living room, grant myself permission to believe in God once again is solely because I saw an unexpected grasshopper staring at my thoughts on the table that keeps the telephone from having a mind of its very own. At first I was startled and then I was startled less at the sight of this insect. Put together in green details to pay me an afternoon visit 39 floors above floor level in my high-rise hobo apartment miracle on 53rd Street 
Grasshopper hopped all the way 39 floors above floor level to deliberately invade my privacy, and I didn't mind at all. After Grasshopper assured me it didn't speak English or Spanish or Chinese with an Italian accent. So, we hit it off right away. You mind your own business, and I will not ask you any personal questions aside from how the hell did you get here. I've never written a poem about grasshoppers this high up before. And I know it wasn't something my non-existing paintbrushes conceived behind my back. And the only grass I have here is to smoke and not hop around in until I get dizzy and levitate. There has to be a mistake. Or did the grasshopper take the elevator to the 39th floor and enter my apartment without knocking? To make it obvious, grasshoppers have the right to remain silent. Also, and give credit to the desert for his arrival and not know Almighty, the only other mystery capable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ode to the Grasshopper um, by Pedro P.G. All right, guys. Oh, before I go, 13 minutes left before I open it up to you guys. What we're going to do on the Palaha Chautauqua between now and Christmas time is that I want us to dedicate each week to one of these fruits of the Spirit. So I want to talk about joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, and love. And I would love to just sort of explore each one of those each week as we go into the holiday season. I think it'll be good for the soul, and I think it'll be good for us to remind ourselves of what that looks like, how to put those things into practice, and how to just how to just start putting that in our lives, to download that into our own hearts and to start having that become evident in our lives. Um, I do, in October, because I do like that it gets all crispy and, and chilly and haunting and cold, I want to dedicate one weekend to uh, ghost stories. If you've had a ghost encounter, a boo we'll do that. Um, but I don't think we'll do it on the last week of October. We'll probably do it the week before, the penultimate weekend, the penultimate Sunday of October. Um, and then what else? That's it. Let's see what we got. Let's see who's out there. Does anybody feel like singing a song? If you feel like singing a song, tap your heart and, and request your... Um, there. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Ali. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Good. Hey, is it Sorry, weird? Moved watching out of our us? loud room. That's okay. What? You look good. You look nice. Your hair, everything's good. Oh, thank you. Um, question for you: Is it weird watching a live show and then all of a sudden being on the show live? You took me by surprise because I watch every week. Um, yeah. And then when you said we're going to, I ran in the other room so it wouldn't be so loud. <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, um, where are you Wait, coming to me live yeah. from? I'm in Anaheim, California. Oh, you're in Anaheim, California. Gwen Stefani is from Anaheim, California. She is. Is she like, is she like one <laughs> she of the- She went to Cal State Fullerton, just like me, yeah. Is she really? Yeah. Yeah, she's very cool. Not that I know her. She is. Yeah, yeah she's very cool. Um, so what, what are you- have you been, okay, let's, we'll, we'll just rehash the show real quick. Have you been uh, particularly anxious in the last six months? I am a mother of four. I have triplets and a three-year-old or two-year-old. They're all going to be one and three in the next two weeks. And um, so they were preemies when all of this kind of started. We had just gotten home from the hospital and so it was very anxious, like very stressful, especially the beginning of all of this. Holy cow. So you have yeah. four, you have four babies all under three? Correct. You're kind of coming in and out a little bit. Can you, and they're all going to be me? one. Yeah. yeah, sorry. That was my fault. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Wow. 
So it's been, it's been a lot trying to keep them all in the house and occupied during this whole time. But how are, how are I have you a lot of, that? you know, I am very lucky to live by family. So I've had a lot of help kind of been able to take breaks for myself. And uh, so that's been a big help. <laughs> yeah. That has and my be. husband's amazing. So he's been super helpful with all of it too. Good, good. Holy cow, you like that's like that's like yeah. a really I mean that's like insane. You should have a shirt that says I survived twenty twenty with four babies. <laughs> um wow. Right? It's how, a little bit crazy. how do you like how do you um how do you deal with okay, so you are probably a really great person to ask, like how do you deal with when you feel frustrated or when you and I'm sure there have been moments, oh boy, I just knocked my light out, but it doesn't really seem to matter. Um it doesn't matter. Anyway, how when you um like when you feel totally anxious and totally like you just want to crawl into a hole and go somewhere else like what brings you back like how do you kind of keep your sanity you know i'm very lucky like i said i live with near my family so i've been able to see them through all of this and then i am very lucky to be raised um catholic and just kind of know that the lord is going to take care of everything and that I can come to him with my worries. And I say a lot of rosaries. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, but we've been, I mean, we've been able to go back to our church. It's outside. So that was lovely. It's been about two months that we've been able to go back to that. So to receive the Eucharist has cool. been really helpful. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, but lots of prayer, lots of family, lots of um, help from friends too, so. So community, like your family and your community. Is community has really, been yeah. huge, yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, well, Ali, I appreciate you watching and like kind of, have you been, have you been tuning in for a little while or like how long have you been checking this I thing have. out? I yeah. have. Yeah. Since, yeah, for about three months at least. That's awesome. That's really cool. That's really yeah. cool. Um, is there anything else that like I kind of, do you, is there anything else that you would like to say or is there anything else or we, you just want to like, was it just hi? No, it's just been so I, I love all of your work that you've done. I watched all of your movies, especially I found a couple on Netflix and Amazon Prime during this time. So that I've been able to watch like Run the Race and yeah, cool. um, where hope. Yeah, Gross. so it's just been yeah. nice to talk to you. <laughs> That's cool. Well, thank you for um, supporting yeah. me and being and, and watching the movies and all that stuff. And thanks for uh, tuning into this every week. It's awesome. Well, thank you for doing this. It's kind of a nice little escape for a little while. Cool, cool. Lots well, of enjoy. positivity. Yeah. Thank you. How's the um, how's the air in California? Is it kind of better? It's definitely gotten better. Yeah, it was it was not pretty for a couple couple weeks, but it's nice and bright these days. It's back. All right. Well, I'm going to be back there yeah. this week. So I'm looking forward to being. Well, home. there you go. It'll be nice, nice and clear for you. Good. All right, Allie. Nice talking to you. Thank you. Nice right, talking bye. to you, too. Bye. Bye. <laughs> there we go. Um, I have a light. And I think, let me see. Whoa. Boom, 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 boom. There we go. Um, let's see. Oh, hold on a second. That's sweet. Um, how are you guys feeling about, uh, about the fall so far. Let's see. I think we're going to say goodbye there. I'm waiting for somebody, but, but it's not for them. Um, you know what? I think it was going to be. I think I'm going to leave it with Allie. Um, sorry, we're winding down here, guys. We're winding down. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to wrap it up. I think I'm going to be short and sweet. And I'm going to see if uh, the kinks want to play us out. Let me see if they are, are down to uh, down to play us out. The kinks are down to play us out, apparently. They don't mind one more round of Waterloo Station. Um, 
I almost say a little, uh, you know, just a word for you guys. Um, if you let me, I just want to say, um, what's up, guys? Hey, this is someone's first time watching. Gail, welcome to the Palaha Chautauqua. Everybody gets a shout out on the Palaha Chautauqua. And uh, weather in Virginia is gorgeous this fall. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Um, all right, you guys, just chat amongst yourselves for a second. I'm going to play this music after I say a little blessing for you guys. Lord, I just want to lift up the community of people that is watching this show right now, that are watching this show. And I want to pray for anybody who watches it, that they just have a really amazing week filled with love that is both deep and wide, Father God. Um, that there will be a spirit of grace and a spirit of peacefulness and a spirit of patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control, that these people will feel a joy that surpasses any kind of happiness that ever could be expected, that ultimately will all be an outpouring of love. Um, I just pray that for each and every soul watching this thing, who will and who is watching it. In your awesome name we pray. Amen. Um, dudes? Why don't you just chill out and listen to this guy? Bye bye. Thanks for watching the Palaha Chautauqua. I'm gonna read your comments for a minute because when I when I go away, they go away. Bye-bye, dudes. Bye-bye. See you next week, everybody.